Hi MMA fans and welcome to another MMA fighting video. After his last bout against Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor has been recovering from a gruesome leg injury he received during the fight. The Notorious has been hinting at his return to the octagon and just recently the UFC president Dana White confirmed the return of Conor to the UFC as a coach on the Ultimate Fighter show against Michael Chandler. The lightweight champion in that division, Islam Makachev, revealed his goal in the upcoming fight against Alexander Volkanovsky. While some people would find the statement optimistic, one cannot deny Islam's ability to finish a fight at any position. In the world of boxing, ever since Francis Ngannou announced his departure from the company, boxing analysts have been speculating about who his first boxing opponent will be. In a Max on Boxing, Max Kellerman welcomed Chris Mannix to discuss Ngannou's potential boxing opponent. We will look into these rumors and news and analyze them more profoundly. But before that, please make sure to like and subscribe because it helps our channel grow. Conor vs Chandler Saga and How It Started Michael Chandler signing with the UFC was probably one of the best decisions of his life. All of his UFC fights have been total wars and even though he lost some of them, those fights were so close that they could easily go either way. In his most recent fight against the boogeyman of the lightweight division, Tony Ferguson, after knocking him out with a front kick to the chin, Michael Chandler had all the right to make the call out he wanted. Being as entertaining on the microphone as in the octagon, Chandler had no hesitation calling McGregor out. Conor McGregor, you've got to come back and fight somebody. I am the most entertaining lightweight on the planet, but I want to up the stakes, Conor. I want you at your biggest. I want you at your baddest and I want you at your best. You and me at 170 this summer, this fall, this winter. Holler at your boy, are Chandler's exact words after brutalizing Tony Ferguson moments before. Right after the call out, McGregor tweeted that he likes the idea, responding respectfully, which is unlikely for him. I'd have a nice knock off this guy, no doubt about it. A fireworks spectacle, was the tweet that McGregor posted in response to that. That call-out aged like a fine wine considering that Chandler now revealed that there are talks about him versus McGregor on The Ultimate Fighter show. That's been in the talks. Obviously, everybody knows I would be down. Me, Connor on The Ultimate Fighter, whether it be four, six weeks, or however long we'd be filming that thing, the tension, the rivalry, the competition, the trash talk, just the animosity that would be built up, and then going into a training camp and then fight later on after the show, Chandler said. A breaking news from Dana White just came out, announcing that these two MMA elites will coach the Ultimate Fighter show that will air from May 30th to August 15th this year, and they will potentially clash in the octagon by the end of 2023. Now that we know that this massive fight will finally capitalize, that would lead to the question, who has the better chance of winning? Many people would count McGregor out due to his inactivity and argue that he is past his prime, but is he? Yes, he is on a losing streak. Does that mean he is over the hill and unable to compete with the best? Let's look at who he has lost against. Khabib Nurmagomedov and Dustin Poirier, two of the best lightweights of all time. There is no shame in losing to those monsters. Losing to them doesn't mean someone is over his prime. Stylistically speaking, Michael Chandler may be the most winnable match for Conor out of all the other fighters in the top five list. If this fight truly happens, there is no doubt that McGregor would call Chandler a slappy wrestler with an overhand right. The problem is that Chandler is not only a great wrestler, but a fighter who can turn your lights off any time. Watching Chandler's previous fights, he did not try to wrestle but rather stand and bang, delivering wars and fights for the ages. In his possible matchup against Connor, his best chance to win is to mix his striking with wrestling. Still judging by his previous bouts, it's doubtful we will see Chandler playing safe by using his wrestling against the Notorious. Also, Chandler always likes to say that he is not here for a long time, but for a good time, meaning he is always here to deliver a show and scream at fans afterward. Are you not entertained? The most likely scenario is that Chandler would try to beat Connor on the feet, throwing bombs, trying to deliver that big right at Connor's chin, and with that turning into a superstar overnight. Just imagine what it would mean for Chandler to knock McGregor out, defeating him in his own world. There is a lot to gain, but the question is, is it worth the risk? Connor, on the other hand, is the best counterpuncher in the division. If Chandler does what he always does, throwing a big right hand and extending his body in the process, Connor can easily counter that and deliver a straight left to his chin, knocking him out cold. He has been knocked out before, it can happen again. 
especially against a knockout artist like McGregor. Again, it all comes to the question, how would Chandler approach this fight? Would he take the risk and keep the action on his feet, or mix it up with superior wrestling, capitalizing on McGregor's tiredness? The thing is, even if he tries that, there is still a big chance that he won't succeed. Take, for example, Connor's fight against wrestlers like Chad Mendez and Eddie Alvarez and how those fights ended for them. Connor has been dealing with wrestlers all his life and someone trying to take him down won't be anything new for him. He is also faster, more fluid on the feet, and overall the more superior striker than Chandler. They both possess that one-punch knockout power, but McGregor also has the height and reach advantage. Combine that with his speed and precision, it may be a bad matchup for Chandler and one of the most winnable fights for Connor's return. At the end of the day, whoever wins this fight could open the door for the next title contender against the winner of Makachev vs. Volkanovski. If you like our video so far, please press the like button. Makachev on his upcoming fight against Volkanovski Speaking of Islam Makachev, while the standard narrative in the MMA world is that his best chance to win is to wrestle the Australian fighter and capitalize on his tiredness, the Russian fighter revealed his plan that surprised many. In a recent interview, Makachev stated that he aims to knock Volkanovsky out and prove to everyone that his stand-up is as good as his wrestling. He also mentioned that people see him as a wrestler, but he is eager to show them how he can also strike. Honestly, I want to knock him out. Everybody says Islam is a grappler or wrestler, but I want to show people my striking. He's a short guy, and I really believe I can knock him out," Makachev told ESPN Deportes Carlos Contreras Lagaspi. The Sambo specialist continued elaborating, mentioning the size factor and how this division is a different dimension for the Australian fighter of Macedonian origin. This is not his area. I am from another division. This is not the same power, not the same. He's going to understand this," Makachev said. Is it a good idea to challenge Volk on the feet and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Australian fighter? Let's analyze this upcoming fight. Volkanovski is an offensive wrestler, but his defense is not as good as his offense. He has been taken down by smaller fighters like Chad Mendez before, a fighter whose wrestling is not as good as Makachev's, aside from their size difference. If Chad could take Volkanovski down three times in their fight, Islam undoubtedly can as well. Not only Chad, but even Brian Ortega, who is not known as an offensive wrestler, managed to take Volk down. Makachev can implement his pressure game by executing a takedown first, and he can do it in two different ways. He can do it while they are in a clinch, using his sambo and judo credentials, or he can do it traditionally from a distance. Either way, the real question regarding that is, how much has Volkanovski improved in his defensive wrestling over the years? His fight against Chad Mendez was four years ago, and ever since, he has improved significantly as a martial artist. Take his last fight against Max Holloway as an example. They fought two times before, but the last time they met, it was a pure dominant performance, a masterpiece, which indicates how much Volk has improved over the years. Makachev had never fought a real wrestler before, and if Alex worked on his defense wrestling as much as on his striking, then Makachev might be in real trouble. One thing that differentiates Volk from the other fighters in his heart, Ortega is a feared jujitsu wizard, and everyone knows that one mistake is all it takes for Brian to win a fight at any moment. When they met in the octagon and Ortega got Volk into a deep-mounted guillotine choke, it seemed that this would be the end of Alexander's reign as a champion. To this day, people are trying to figure out how Volk could escape from such a position. That was a choke that would make anyone tap, anyone but Volkanovsky. If that wasn't enough, shortly after escaping the guillotine, Alex was caught in a triangle choke, and he escaped that too. That's something you cannot train. You either have it or you don't. The difference here is that Ortega would risk position for a submission, but not Makachev. Even if Islam goes for a submission, he would only do it if he doesn't risk losing his dominant position. If the submission attempt fails, he is still on top, capitalizing on his opponent's tiredness and keeping the constant pressure on the ground. Maybe Alex would survive the submission attempt, but that wouldn't help him escape Islam's pressure. On the other hand, Volk is the better striker and has one of the best lead kicks in the sport. He can use that to his advantage, faking a low kick as Makachev tries to catch it and counter that with an uppercut that could change the entire progress of the fight. However, Alexander must fight a very clever fight without making any mistakes, and beating Makachev would require the best version of Alex we've seen before. Are we looking at the next Francis Ngannou's opponent in boxing? 
Max Kellerman welcomed Chris Mannix to Max on Boxing to discuss the interest of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury to welcome the former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou into the ring. According to Max Kellerman, Tyson Fury's management team would try to outbid Anthony Joshua's management team into capitalizing on a fight against the former UFC champion, Francis Ngannou. According to Kellerman, there is no doubt who the winner will be. Regardless if the Predator fights Fury or Joshua, either way, the analyst believes that this could be the one and only fight Ngannou would have in a boxing ring, considering that his skill set would be exposed and he would never like to return to this sport. On the other hand, Chris Mannix believes that both these boxing elites would go after Ngannou because they would see him as easy prey that would give them a big payday, while the chances for Francis to win, according to Mannix, are virtually zero. However, they forgot to mention that Francis Ngannou holds the current record for the hardest punch in the world, having clocked a striking power of 129,161 units on a power cube, which measures the power of a punch based on a variety of different factors, including force, speed, and accuracy. In other words, the African fighter possesses a nuclear button that he can activate at any time and shut the lights off to any fighter on this planet. And what do you guys think? Do you believe Ngannou stands a chance against Fury or Joshua? Who do you think would win between Makachev versus Volkanovski and between a potential fight between McGregor versus Chandler? Leave your thoughts in the comments. And if you like to watch more content like this, please make sure to like and subscribe.